Welcome to the next episode of Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector video series. My name is Veronica and I'm Cisco Technical Marketing Engineer. And in today's demo, I'm going to walk you through CSDAC integration with AWS. For purpose of this demonstration, we are going to allow employees from engineering department to communicate via NG Firewall with AWS DevOps resources or workload resources that are marked with engineering AWS tab. And any other resources, engineering department won't be able to access. So essentially, we are going to allow access only between related devices and restrict access between unrelated devices. This will allow administrators to set up a rule once and then let CSDAC system to take care of any upcoming dynamic changes for ephemeral workloads, for example, when machines spin up on demand with dynamic IPs. So you have reviewed articles around dynamic objects or attributes solution that Cisco CSDAC offers, followed our guidelines on how to install it, and are looking for more practical use case deployments, then this video is for you. We will dive into whole configuration setup for CSDAC integration with AWS. So in terms of what we are going to be covering today, we are going to showcase you all configuration that is necessary for CSDAC integration with AWS. First, we are going to start with setting up the AWS connector on CSDAC. Then we will continue with setting up REST API user on the FNC. Then we will set up FNC adapter on CSDAC. And next, we are going to showcase you how to configure dynamic attributes filters that will leverage non-IP based constraints in order to learn dynamically about any AWS dynamic changes performed to the workloads. Last but not least, we will showcase you that we are learning indeed about any dynamic changes from AWS through CSDAC down to the FMC and NG firewall. And then we are going to leverage those dynamic changes or dynamic objects within simple firewall rule. And lastly, we are going to showcase you whole configuration setup in action. So let's start. Setting up AWS connector on CSDAC allows us to obtain IP address information from AWS. The CSDAC communicates with AWS in order to dynamically populate the firewall's dynamic objects with IP addresses. To create an AWS connector on CSDAC, navigate to Connector Sections, which is actually a landing page upon your login to the CSDAC. Click on the plus sign button to add a new connector and select AWS as a connector type. Now we are going to configure following options. First, we are going to enter a name. This is actually a unique identifier of the connector. We can have actually one or more connectors of the same type. Then we are going to enter pool interval, which specify how often the dynamic objects and corresponding mappings are retrieved from the provider. Then we are going to enter AWS region. Basically, this is the region where our EC2 or instances of virtual machines are deployed. In our case, we are going to leverage US best 2, which represents US best Oregon region. Then we are going to enter access key uh, ID that we have obtained from AWS in order to make a programmatic calls from CSDAC to AWS. Then we are going to enter secret key, which is actually sensitive information that allow us to secure, securely communicate with AWS. Then save those settings and make sure that the status of this newly configured connector is showing OK, because that will represent that our communication between CSDAC and AWS is successful. Now we are going to perform configuration that will allow CSDAC to communicate with FMC. 
For this communication, we do recommend to create a dedicated FMC user that will make REST API calls, which will essentially automatically create dynamic objects for interested AWS workloads on the FMC. In order to create FMC user, we navigate into the System Users Configuration section and click on Create User button. Then we are going to enter a couple of mandatory information, such as username. For that, we are going to use csdac underscore API. Then we are going to enter password values and we actually confirm it one more time to make sure that the password that we have entered is correct and we don't do any typo. Then we are going to select user administrator configuration role and save our settings. With this in mind, we have created a new user that will be used for communication between CSDAC and FMC. After creating FNC REST API user, we are going to enter details to CSDAC so it knows how to reach the FMC. So we can do that by navigating to Adapters Configuration section. Then we click on the plus button and select the FNC as an adapter type. Now we enter mandatory details such as unique name of FNC adapter, since we can have multiple FNCs linked to the same CSDAC. Then we are going to enter IP address or hostname of the FNC. And this is an important step because this information needs to match the common name of the CA certificate uh, from the FMC, otherwise the communication will fail. Then we enter the previously created FNC user csdac underscore API that we have created uh, with the administrator privileges. However, if we would like to grant the minimum access, we could have assigned to this user the network admin role. Then we enter the password that we have set up for this user. And optionally, we can specify FNC AJ secondary IP address. Then we need to make sure uh, that we can successfully establish connection with FMC and for that we need to obtain FMC certificate and enter content to the FMC adapter configuration section. Now we can just save the setting and make sure that connection status showcase OK which will indicate that we have created communication between the connector and the FMC. Now we are going to cover configuration of the dynamic attributes filters on CSDAC. In nutshell, with this configuration, we are going to be automatically pulling the IP addresses of EC2 instances in AWS environment that belongs only to engineering department resources. The IPs of engineering VM resources will be identified dynamically as long as they have assigned Department Engineering Service tag. If any new VM using this tag is removed, shut down or reallocated to different department, then the IP or set of IPs of that VM is either removed or added automatically from the Dynamic Attributes filter and Dynamic Object without any manual intervention from the administrator end. Now, in the CSDSC menu, navigate to Dynamic Attributes Filters configuration section. Then, click on hyperlink with the name Create Dynamic Attributes Filter. This will open up a configuration of Dynamic Attribute Filter rule. Now, select the connector from drop-down menu and select AWS which is actually the connector we have previously configured. In case you have already more than one connectors already set up, all of them will be displayed here in the drop-down menu. Now, enter name of this dynamic attribute filter rule. Note that this name will be the name of the dynamic object that will be pushed to the FMC for its use in access control policy or firewall rule set. Now, under query, click on plus sign button to create non-network based conditions in order to learn 
about IPs from AWS workloads. Note that each dynamic attributes filter or dynamic object will represent one or more workloads that the system learns about based on entered conditions in this section. Within dynamic attributes filter conditions, enter key, which is the name of service, AWS service tag name. Presented key names here depends on what is configured and put from AWS environment. Operations in the attribute filter rule could be set to either equal or contains option. Well, equal means actually that we need exact match of the entered string. Contain, on other hand, means that it is enough that only part of the value matches. Now click OK. And before saving our dynamic attribute filter rule, click on Show Preview. This section will display all learned IP addresses, private or public or both, assigned to the AWS resources that matches our query in this dynamic attribute filter. Now save the rule. With this, we have learned all IP addresses from AWS resources that has assigned Department Engineering AWS Service Stack. Now we need to confirm that we have learned the dynamic object and same amount of IP addresses on FMC compared to what CSDAC pulled from the AWS by using the newly configured dynamic attribute filter rule. To do so, in the FMC UI, navigate to Object, Object Management section, then expand External Attributes, select the dynamic object, and in the presented screen, confirm that the dynamic attribute filter rule name that we have just created matches the name of the dynamic object in the FMC, which has been actually automatically created via API call by CSDAC. Now we are ready to use learn dynamic object in our access control policy firewall rule set. Now we have reached the final step of the configuration that we need to perform before showing you the feature in the action. So let's move, it, move on. So still within the FMC, we navigate to policies, access control, and find in the present list of access control policies, the correct ACP in which you want to associate the new dynamic object. Edit the desired access control policy via pencil button. Now we are going to change the current demo access control rule to use dynamic attributes, which is actually a revamped column in the FMC UI 7 or release. This has been previously an SGT tag column. So open up a rule to modify it. Now navigate to dynamic attributes tab and from available attributes, click on drop down menu. Choose what kind of dynamic attribute you wish to use. Note that we can use SGT tags, device, uh, device type or location IP as in previous releases, but additionally now we added dynamic object type here because all of those uh, things are considered as a dynamic attribute. So select the dynamic object and system will display now all available dynamic objects that it held. Select one that we have just created on CSDAC, which has named AWS Department Engineering. Click on it and select Add to Destination. Now save the rule and save also Access Control Policy and deploy the changes so that they are immediately effective. Note that from now on, any updates to the dynamic object content uh, that is already used in access control policy rule does not require any additional manual changes by administrator. Even new policy deployment is not necessary for those objects. This massively simplifies configuration of the firewall rules. So moving from the static to dynamic object type configuration is a great time saver. 
This allows administrators to secure access in rapidly changing environments without impacting operations. From the AWS EC2 instance view, we see two VMs in our origin AWS region. First VM is actually engineering web server that has assigned two IP addresses. First, from the private space that has the last octet .81 and then other one from the public address space with the last octet being .183. When we navigate to CSDAC, we see both of them being learned on CSDAC, which means that this specific VM has currently assigned Department Engineering Service type, which is true, as you can see presented from the screen on the AWS environment. Thanks to our dynamic attribute filter, we have learned the IPs of the engineering VM resource in AWS. The ping initiated from the on-prem client located behind Cisco Secure Firewall is successful towards this AWS EC2 uh, particular instance. As you can see from the continuous ping running in the left upper screen. The second VM in AWS named NetSec Demo has assigned private IP address that ends with 242 last octet and the public IP address with the last octet being 170, as you can see from AWS networking screen. From the CSDAC view, we can confirm that the system learned both of those IP addresses as well from the EC2 instance. This is due to the fact that this VM has also department engineering tag assigned in AWS and that matches our exact condition in attributes filter. Therefore, it is expected that on-prem client is able to communicate with it across Cisco Secure Firewall. Since we have set up in dynamic attribute filter query previously that the department needs to equal to engineering string with exact match, now we are going to see what happens when we change the tag to one of the EC2 instances. So, as you can see from the screen, we have changed the department service tag value from engineering to engineering222. And we are noticing that the continuous ping from the on-premises client towards this VM, which has changed the department tag, stop working. So the dynamic changes are immediately effective without need to perform any policy deployment from the FMC. How cool is that? So let's go to the CSDAC dynamic attribute filter condition configuration. Let's change the operation from equal to contains. And let's keep the same engineering uh, string as a value being set. Upon this change, after saving this config, we are noticing almost instant change in the connectivity from the on-prem client towards the EC2 instance that, that includes the engineering 222 as a department tag value. So that you can see with this example that uh, it is enough to have just part of the department tag value matching and not the whole string to learn EC2 instances IP addresses. Now we will quickly change the operations of the dynamic attributes filter back to exact match by using equal operation. And now we will also see preview of learned IPs and we see that the system have only IPs from one EC2 instance now. Another example that you can leverage in the deployment is to place multiple exact strings of the VM tags within the dynamic attributes filters rules with OR or AND logical operators. We are going to have example with two department values where at least one of them needs to match either engineering or engineering 222 uh, values. So as you can see, there are a variety of the options that you can place depending on your needs. And with this in mind, uh, this concludes our demonstration section. This concludes our session. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.